You see, this is important because, watch this, there is no victory without a fight. And there is no testimony without a test. There's no crown without a cross, and there's no resurrection without a crucifixion. There's no healing without some sickness. A lot of people want those testimonies and everything, but they don't want to go through what it takes to get them. They don't want to walk through those areas to say, God, even when I felt like I was so low, Lord, I still believe. I remember so many testimonies how God took you on that sickbed and he raised you up. He's the same God, amen? I'm I'm declaring he is Jehovah Rapha. He is your healer, hallelujah. I don't know what the healing is, but God can heal it. He is Jehovah Shalom, he's your peace. He is Jehovah Jireh, he is the God that sees ahead and he provides for you. But you've got to call him by the name that you know him. That's why I said, with this fast, the Lord told me, he said, I'm going to deliver some folks from some stuff. And I'm going to deliver them from themselves. If they call out to me, I will answer, Jeremiah 33 and 3, and I will show them great and mighty things. You see, the only reason you get nothing out is because you expect it to come to you before you respond. How about we do something novel and we go to God before he tries to come to us out of mercy because we've been in such a a funky state? Can I say that? I guess I did. Amen. You know, there's something that you will have to go through to get your promise. The woman with the issue of blood had to press through a crowd. She had to press through. And she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be made well. You know, Bartimaeus, he literally sat on the outside and he, he, he said, you know what, this is my last chance. And I'm not saying this is your last chance, but this is a good chance, amen, amen. to see what God can do. But what Bartimaeus did is he refused to sit in that place of self-pity. And he began to now do some affirmative action and began to cry out to God. You've tried everything else. Why don't you try and see what God can do with your future? when you put it into his hands. The Lord is my revelation, the passion translation says, the light to guide me along the way. He's the source of my salvation to defend me every day. I fear no one. What a word. I fear no one. You see, why does God allow us to have tests and these, our faith to be tested? Some of you have been asking that same question. Jeremiah 1, 3, and 4, the Passion says, For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up power within you to endure all things. Verse 4, And then as your endurance grows, even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. You see, our faith must be tested. Every one of you have a test. I don't know what your specific test is, but I know every one of us has a test. And that test is dependent on whether you will show up and take the test, enter into the exam, or whether you'll just sleep through it and wait for another test to come. But guaranteed, compound tests are much harder to pass than when God gives you little pot tests here and there. Because those pop tests, what he's doing is he's saying, let's work on those muscles again. Let's work on the core again. Let's get our core in shape. You see, because there are some things that you cannot fix. That's the big hope truth. You will not be able to fix it on your own. And never be fooled into thinking that your position, your prosperity, your popularity excludes you from needing Jesus to change you. Don't think that Your biceps or who you are is going to exempt you. My God, I know what the psalmist says now. I've been been rich and I've been poor, but I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. Hallelujah. Isn't that a promise to hold on to in this season right now? I've been rich and I've been poor, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging bread. You will not be begging bread in Jesus' name. I said, you will not beg bread in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. 
Yes. But you have to understand something that is so critical. You got to ask. You got to seek. You got to knock. You got to ask. Come on, somebody say, I got to ask. I got to seek. I got to knock. You see, the Bible said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. You see, you cannot separate your receiving from your asking. God put it that way. He made it that way because he put everything that you need right beyond your ability to control it by yourself. He put it in a place where you'd have to continue asking. How many of you feel like I've asked for certain things and I still feel like I keep on asking to this day? Come on, show me some hands. I'm still asking. You see, I am too because I believe we all continue to ask. I believe what God wants is a holy handicap. I, I believe what God wants us to do is be in a place where you're like, you know what, I thought at this stage as a businessman, I wouldn't have to deal with certain things. But how many of you know, if there's peace in one area, there's a problem on another area. There's joy and pain, but God puts it in that in order for you to, to drive you closer to God, not to drive you away from God. But prayer and fasting helps you hear God. It gives you sensitivity to begin to understand what the Spirit of God is saying. You see, if you don't have that sensitivity, what's going to happen, just like when the young men came up here, the Spirit, the body, and the flesh, the body is going to be reacting to everything that's going on around it. But only the Spirit can come into a relationship with the Spirit of God. You see, this is important to us because the Bible teaches us to pray and fast. It's biblical. Matthew 16, Matthew 6, 16 says, when you pray, not if, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad, sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. You know, when I saw that, I said, God, is, is, could this really be that there is an appearance of fasting? And you say, what could an appearance of fasting be? An appearance of fasting could be everybody else is fasting, but I'm not fasting because if you're not praying, you're not praying with fasting. Everybody's praying corporately, but what I'm doing is I'm saying, eh, I show up the last day, I receive an anointing, but baby, all you got is a little coconut oil, a little bit of olive oil. You might as well go to the spa and get a hot oil treatment, boo. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> because that's what you're looking for. You're faking yourself out. You didn't fake God. Galatians chapter 6, it says, God is not mocked. What you sow to, you shall receive. If you sow to the flesh, you'll reap destruction. If you sow to the spirit, you'll reap eternal life. Amen? Amen? A man will receive what he sows. If this pandemic has taught us nothing else, it's taught us don't just go to the gym with a nice looking bag, but put some stuff in the gym so when you get to the gym, <laughs> you can work out. You say, what is this all about? Well, I usually have a pre-workout. A pre-workout is really good because what it does do, before I go into the gym, it begins to get my, my amps up. It begins to get me fired up. You say, what are the, what are the, what are the, what's the pre-workout that God gives us? Well, this is the fasting plan. I'm going to give it to you. It's on the screen. And it is be intentional about your fast, about your, your fasting plan. Man, I just, I, I wrote that at a time. <laughs> it just went all over the place. But be intentional. You guys will get that. Amen? But not only be intentional with a fasting plan, be proactive and write down what you're going to do. you got to make it clear. Make it clear so you can remember it. And I'm not asking you guys to, to fast a bunch of things and, and put a lot of things on your list. I'm not asking you to lie. I'm not asking you to do something so you can get the applause of man. I'm asking you, say, God, I want to hear your voice. I want to restore the joy of my salvation. I want, Lord, to be more useful in your hands. I want to be a good steward of yours. Amen? Because what you do, if you aim at nothing, you'll hit it every time. But if you aim at something, you'll get it every time as well. But see what you got to do. You got to be deliberate. And you got to devote some time and study to meditate on this. 
There's got to be some time into this. You are supposed to be victorious because of your position in Christ. Because of what Christ did on the cross, you're supposed to be successful. For I did not, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you would have life to the full. God wants that life to the full, but in order for that life to the full, you're going to have to say yes to some things and you're going to have to say no to other things. You can't say yes to everything and have abundant life. There has to be some things that you say no to. You know, when I was preparing this, the Lord kept giving me a, 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 a phrase. And one of the things he said is, my peace is a privilege. And it is not negotiable. You see, Jesus gives us peace, but I think sometimes when, when we're in even a Christian environment and everything, people take advantage of our peace. They are living in chaos, but they are not willing to put the work in, but they want their chaos to come on you so they can have your peace. But God says, I give you peace, not as the world. So I believe in this beginning of the year of Gamal, what you're going to have to do is say, my peace is a privilege. And it is, it needs to be guarded with everything that I've got. Because if you don't guard your peace, my God, everything around you will pull you in pieces. But that's what core training is about. Core training is all about discipline. It says in Proverbs 10, 17, the Amplified, he who heeds instruction, correction, is not only himself in the way of life, but also is a way of life for others. Did you get that? When you discipline yourself, when you, when you submit to the discipline of God, praise God, others are watching you. So that means that this discipline that God says is important for our core training. I'm not asking you more for biceps and, and glutes, but I'm asking you for obedience. Exodus 23, 22, the New Living Translation says, but if you are careful to obey him following all my instructions, then I will be an enemy to your enemies. And I will oppose those who oppose you. My God, what a promise. 1 John 5, 3, the new living. Loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Come on, somebody say discipline. It's part of my core. Come on, say obedience. It's part of my core. But this is the third part of my core. Faithfulness. It's part of my core. You see, this is where you have to have faithfulness. And in this generation, I find people struggling, and they want God to be faithful. They want the pastor to be faithful. They want the worship team to be faithful. They want the, 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 the ventilation system to be faithful. But they want to show up anytime and do anything and then do whatever they want to do. How does that work in any good universe? Oh, my God. Come on, say this with me. Discipline. Discipline. Obedience. Obedience. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. The Bible said in Hebrews 10, 23, the New Living, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. God can be trusted to keep his promises to you. But watch, wait, wait for the question. Are you ready for the question? Are you ready for the question? Can you be trusted to keep your promise? Maybe that's what you're going to be fasting about. Maybe you're going to be fasting about, Lord, restore the joy of my salvation. Renew in me a clean heart. Renew within me a steadfast spirit so I can be faithful. Because God is faithful to the faithful. I don't know too many people that can go to the gym once a week or once a month and come out with nice biceps, glutes, and also pecs. <laughs> I don't know how many basketball players can continue to dunk and do everything like that, and they can eat Mickey D's, and, and they can eat Chick-fil-A and everything else, and then just play a full game. I don't know how many sisters can walk the catwalk, and they can strike that pose. <laughs> and they can do whatever they want, eat every candy and sweet. It has to be disciplined, doesn't it? 
Is that a dirty word in our day today? We need to bring it back. Amen? Amen. Come on, somebody say discipline. discipline. Obedience. Obedience. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. See, that's our core training. So what that means is this. Who is your God? Who will you serve? Make that choice. If it's the gods of Canada, what's trending, what's popular, if it's the gods of economic standard time, and you want to continue to move around, but if you are calling on the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Bible literally says, choose this day who you'll serve. Will it be God? Will it be man? This fast is no problem when you choose God. Your marriage, your finances, your health is no problem when you choose God. Because grace has a person attached to it and its name is Jesus. Jesus is the grace of God. Amen? Everything that you have is inside of Christ. Oh, come on, give God praise with that. Everything that you have is inside of Christ. This is important because grace has a name, and it's Jesus. God's going to pour grace out on your life, grace upon grace upon grace. So what you have to do is choose to live, but not on these people who have this training, take home truth. Choose to live and walk in the knowledge of the word of God. I'm going to go over them quickly, only for time. Hosea said, my people are destroyed because they don't know me. We're going to pursue to know God. Amen? Amen. Number two, we will choose to exercise faith in right motives. It says in James, you want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. We will choose to exercise faith in right motives. Because if you ask with the right motives, God is going to answer every time. But last, and I know I went through it fast, but we will choose to live and walk in obedience to the word of God. Mark eleven twenty five. 25. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you're holding a grudge against so that your father in heaven will forgive your sin too. I think that's very clear. You can't pray when you're all bound up and holding on to anger with something that someone did in the past. So the way that we start this, and I believe that this is a God-ordained day of epiphany. Epiphany when wise men found in the Orthodox Church, Jesus, that we find forgiveness today. Because we say, I'm not waiting for somebody else to come and apologize to me. I'm coming to apologize to God. And I'm going to apologize, and I'm going to live right with everyone around me. I guarantee you. God is going to do miracles in your life, in this congregation. And he's going to restore the joy of your salvation. There will be miracles, signs, and wonders. Why? Because we choose this day to serve God and not man. Amen? 